Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now to His temple draw near. Praise Him in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely His goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do if with his love he befriend thee. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore him. All that had life and breath come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from his people again. Gladly for I we adore him. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in us adore him, all that have life and breath. Come now with praises before him. Let the amen, let the goodness of the Lord be reflected. Let the kindness of the Lord come out of the lips of his people. Wherever you are, would you say amen? Would you give the Lord praise? Would you let him know that you appreciate him, that we are alive on this, the seventh day of the second month of 2021 in the year of a pandemic, but in a year where we are still experiencing his faithfulness and his goodness well i want to welcome you to our online our virtual service today we are happy that you have taken time uh, to be with us and i look forward to the day when we will meet again in person um, so we can worship the lord together um, now I invite you to, I know that this service will be a blessing to you, so I invite you to engage with us, to, to not just be a spectator, but to engage as we join in this time of worship. And so um, wherever you are, we are going to put the uh, call to worship on your screen. Um, the few of us that are here will, will do the responses, but we want you, wherever you are, to join with us um, as we engage, as we tune our hearts now. For worship. The grace from our Lord Jesus Christ, the love from God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us all. Amen. The Lord is King, He is enthroned upon the cherubim. The Lord, the Lord is, is great. great, He, he is, is high above, above all peoples, peoples and all creation. creation. Holy, glorious, and powerful is the Lord our God and King. We gather in reverence with praise, thanksgiving, and worship for the Lord, Lord our, our God. God. Our God is loving, gracious, and merciful. Together, Almighty, Almighty God, God, to you all hearts are open, open all, all desires, desires known, and from you no, no secrets are hidden. hidden. Cleanse, Cleanse the, the thoughts of our hearts, hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today we remember a special time in the life of Christ, a time known as the Transfiguration. And so here, this passage of scripture from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 to 8. 
After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Suddenly, when they looked around, sorry, verse 7, then a cloud appeared and covered them. And a voice came from the cloud, this is my son whom I love, listen to him. And verse 8, suddenly when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. And this passage of scripture uh, is also in in the gospel of Matthew chapter 17, um, but it speaks of the transfiguration of Christ. This is one of the mysteries um, of Christ. And as we take a moment to remember this event in the life of Christ, the main message that I want us to remember is that each one of us can gain a, a personal and greater understanding of who Jesus is. But like the disciples, we must engage in a sincere, committed relationship with Jesus Christ. So on this Transfiguration Sunday, may we, may we be challenged to stick with Jesus, especially in this season, so that we will know and experience him fully in his glory, his power, and his strength. Friends, let us bow our heads as we pray the opening prayer to begin today's service. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you that you desire to illuminate us, you desire us to reflect your radiance. Father, may each one of us be truly surrendered so that we will reflect your radiance, your glory, your power. Father, here we are on this another Lord's Day, another opportunity to give you thanks, to connect with the brethren, though virtually, another opportunity to hear a word, but especially another opportunity to declare your praises, to declare that you are faithful, to declare that you are wonderful, to declare that you are great, to declare that you are merciful, to declare that you are kind. Another opportunity to declare that great and mighty is the Lord our God, compassionate and gracious is the Lord our God. And we just bless bless you for your love this morning we bless you for your kindness this morning we bless you for your faithfulness this morning father as we come another time sanctify us afresh by the power of your holy spirit wash us anew with the blood of jesus christ thank you that we who have placed our faith in you through jesus christ we are redeemed we are blood bought we are washed with the blood we are our names are written in the lamb's book of life and there is no greater fame there is no greater thing than to have our names written in the Lamb's book of life but Lord though we are redeemed though we have a place in heaven though we are the children of God though we are the righteousness of God we are still with challenges we are still with troubles we are still with sorrow we are still with suffering we are still with difficulties but we thank you that we have a God who cares we thank you that we have a God who is concerned we thank you that you we have a God who not only cares and is concerned but who is able to help us with our struggles and our challenges so here we come now Lord here we come now we are some of us are here in this building we are in different parts of the city different parts of this province we are in different parts of this world even but we come with all of our issues all of our challenges to you almighty God and we say help us we say heal us we say rescue us we say strengthen us we say deliver us oh god come to our aid and help us help us lord give us strength for this day strength to make it through this week strength to make it through this through this month god do a miracle for us some of us need a breakthrough Some of us are facing discouragement, despondency, despair. Some of us are stuck in the trap of fear and hopelessness. Oh God, help us. Wherever the Shilohites especially are situated at this time, on this moment, on this day, God minister to us and help us. And Father, we vow to give you all the praise. We vow to give you all the glory. We vow to give you all the honor so that we will, so, so, so that, because we know that you are powerful. Because we know that you hear us. For we know that you answer us. So we give you praise. Bless our time of worship today. Everything that is to be done. 
let it be to your glory let the word be received let the worship be generous father everything that is to be done destroy every work of the enemy in our lives and concerning us so have your own way in our time of worship together we have prayed all of these things in Jesus' name amen well brother john will lead us in a time of worship and of praise amen let's worship the lord this morning Is the time to worship? Come now is the time to give your heart. Come just as you are to worship. Just as you are before your God And one day every tongue will confess you are God And one day every knee will bow Still the greatest treasure remains for those Who gladly choose you now one day every tongue will confess you are God And one day every knee will bow But still the greatest treasure remains for those Who gladly choose you now Come, now is the time to Worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Just as you are before your God And one day every tongue will confess you are God Yes, one day every knee will bow But still the greatest treasure remains for those Who gladly choose you now One day Every tongue will confess you are God And one day every knee will bow Still the greatest treasure remains for those Who gladly choose you now I was praying about the service this week And God reminded me that with divine reset comes a reforging uh, remolding the book of Zechariah verses um, chapter 13 verse 9 it says I will bring them through the fire and make them pure what is fire though fire is hot fire burns fire kills but like the three Hebrew boys that were in that fire we will not be burnt we will be hot but we will not be burnt it says i will refine them like silver and purify them like gold god wants to make you like silver and gold it ends with god saying i will say these are my people so church let god do a divine reset in your life and stick with it it will be hot it will feel like it's burning but you will come out as gold if you surrender to the potter and let yourself be the clay. So make this your prayer as I have this week. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you 
change my heart, oh God, and make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. Cause you are the potter and I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. You are the potter. And I am the clay. God mold me and make me. This is what I pray. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Cause my heart's one desire. Yes, my heart's one desire is to be holy and set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be For you, my master, I'm ready to do your will. To purify my heart, let me be as gold and precious silver purify my heart let me be as gold pure gold your refiner's fire that's my heart's one desire is to be Lord holy and set apart for you Lord I choose to be holy For you, who my master, I'm ready to do your will. God, I'm ready to do your will. Lord, I'm ready to do your will. Cause you are the potter And I am your clay God mold me and make me This is 
is what I, I pray. Change my heart, oh God, and make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. Hallelujah, God, I praise your name. Draw us close to you, God, and never let us go. Draw us close to you, God, and never let us go. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious pleading side. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice and is told thy love to me Hallelujah. but I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee so draw me nearer Dearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died, draw me dearer, dearer, blessed Lord, to Thy precious Bleeding side. Consecrate me now. Consecrate me now to thy service, oh, Lord, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul, let my soul look out. Oh, with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding side Hallelujah, our God is indeed worthy. And so may that be the cry of each of our hearts. That we be drawn nearer to Him. That we be transformed by Him. That we be reflective of who He is. That we be purified by Him. That our hearts be purified by Him. That our hearts and our very lives be changed by him because there is no greater thing in life than to be like Jesus God bless you if you had taken the time to stand for this time of worship you may be seated now 
as we continue with the service, I want to give you a few announcements of, un of upcoming events. This Wednesday, we continue. We have our Bible study session at 6.30. We'll send the link out for that. Um, and if anyone is interested and, and you're not on our regular mailing list to get the link so you can join our midweek services, would you send an email or give a phone call to the church and we will add you to our mailing list so that way you could participate in our midweek services. Um, if you want to be part of our midweek services and you do not get the Zoom link, send an email, make a phone call to the church. You can email shc, as in Shiloh Holiness Church, shcottawa at hotmail.com. Uh, please begin to prepare uh, on, on, on February 17th. We will begin the Lenten season. It's Ash Wednesday, and, but we begin our 33 days of fasting. And so I'm trusting that everyone will prepare so we can fast together and seek the Lord as a church. Begin to plan for that. On uh, February 20th is our men's fellowship and the 24th is our press session. Um, and that's what we'll be doing all throughout the season of Lent. Now, this Saturday, um, the ladies will be having a ladies' fellowship um, via Zoom as well, a virtual fellowship, and Sister Nellie will send out information concerning that. But ladies, this Saturday at 6.30 p.m. I want to take a moment to emphasize that this month is Black History Month. And as we have done at Shiloh from the beginning, we take a moment to emphasize that for Black History Month um, is an opportunity for all of us to share and celebrate the achievements and the contributions of Black Canadians that throughout history have done so much to make Canada what it is, to make Canada the cultural, diverse, compassionate, and prosperous nation that we know Canada to be. Black History Month is also an opportunity for all of us to, um, to, to celebrate culture, yes, but to increase our knowledge of the experiences of black Canadians. And, and if I may say, not only to increase our knowledge, but to share our knowledge, to share our experiences so we might encourage or that we might find help, or we might find healing, or we might give hope. So it's not only an opportunity to learn, but it is also an opportunity to share. You'd be amazed how many people have stories to tell, um, how many people have, have impacted. Um, they didn't get their names written in the history books, but how many ordinary folks that we run into um, that can share great things of how they have impacted society and things that we have learned, that we can learn from them. And so in this month, we want to take the opportunity to share uh, black history, to learn about black history, um, because black Canadians continue to play um, a vital role um, in Canadian society, in, in what I believe is our shared history. Um, when we take time to acknowledge the contributions made by black people to society, it's important, not just for black Canadians, but also for all Canadians. And just like the history of many other peoples, Black history speaks of heroes and villains and, and, and sometimes even, uh, if I may use the word, scoundrels and, and rebels. Um, in black history, there is tragedy, there is comedy, there is triumph, there is defeat. In black history, there is injustice and many more. And so in this um, uh, a month, we, we want to take time to learn, to share, um, so that we can be enriched and, and even healed. Um, ultimately, um, black history tells stories that are yours and that are mine. It, well, I like to say black history in Canada is Canadian stories and stories that help us know ourselves better. But here is one thing that I want to, to share with you is that black history is a living history because it continues to be written. And so I want to challenge us to, especially those, those who, who, who are of African ancestry, those who are black, to continue to write history and to be intentional about writing a history that you and others can be proud of. Um, we have black Canadians from a huge multitude of backgrounds and, and we, we contribute to Canada in every walk of life and we should be fiercely proud to say that we are black and we are Canadian. This Black History Month and always, I encourage you to take some time to, to browse through uh, the rich and full history of black uh, Canadians. And I'm certain that if you do that, it will leave you with an even deeper appreciation for the wonderful multi multicultural mosaic that Canada has 
is um, and that blacks have contributed to, which makes in many ways a canon of the envy of the rest of the world. But in Black History Month, more than anything, let us be grateful to God for his faithfulness to us as a people. Because had he not been on our side, we would not have made it thus far. And so we owe him all praise, all glory, and all honor. And so in a, in a little bit, we are going to watch a video from the Honorable Bardis Chagger, um, the Minister of Diversity and Inclusion and Youth. Um, but just before we do that, will you just bow your head and agree with me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, in you we find love, healing, peace, freedom, and justice. As we commemorate Black History Month, we remember the many struggles of black people, but we also remember the many accomplishments and achievements of black people. We thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness. We are thankful for leaders who have advocated for peace and justice. We thank you for those who continue to preach your gospel of grace and of love. Father, remind us, each one of us, that we are all created in your beautiful and glorious image and that your unconditional love and, suffer and sufficient grace breaks all boundaries. Merciful God, make us channels of your peace. Inspire us to work more faithfully for justice and dignity of life everywhere so that the world will know that we are Christians by our love. We offer this prayer in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This February, join me in celebrating Black History Month 2021. Did you know that it's 25 years ago that the government of Canada officially declared February as Black History Month? This was thanks to the efforts of the Honorable Jean Augustine, the first black woman federal cabinet minister. While this is an important milestone to note, 25 years, we know that black people have helped to shape communities from coast to coast to coast for more than 400 years, well before this country was even called Canada. Black History Month is about honoring the enormous contributions that black people have made and continue to make in all sectors of society. It is about celebrating resilience, innovation and determination to work towards a more inclusive and diverse Canada. A Canada in which everyone has every opportunity to flourish. This year's theme, The Future Is Now, is a chance to celebrate and acknowledge the transformative work that Black Canadians and their communities, including Black youth, Black essential healthcare workers, and many others are doing now. It is a chance to acknowledge that they are building a better future for everyone by making a difference in all areas, including academia, the arts, health, sciences, sport, business, and on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. Black History Month reminds us that we stand on the shoulders of giants, that we owe it to them and ourselves to continue their efforts to combat systemic anti-black racism and to keep working to build a true and lasting equity that is formed by black history, black voices, black expertise, and black lived experiences. As we mark the sixth year of the International Decade for People of African Descent, the work is to listen, learn and foster greater understanding and compassion every day and in every interaction with our families, colleagues, friends and acquaintances. This is how we build the future we all want to see now. This is how we build a stronger and more consciously inclusive Canada. Happy Black History Month. We want to now take time to acknowledge our folks um, that we know of um, that are celebrating birthdays in the month and anniversaries in the month of February. Um, so we have several birthdays this month. Um, so we have Melanie, which is Reverend Lorraine and, and Brother Jerry's daughter, uh, who was the fourth. Brother Seaford was yesterday. Um, Brother Fosto is the 8th, um, Sister Carol is the 12th, uh, Sister Nedda is the 15th, Reverend Lorraine is the 22nd, um, I think this is Karen um, Aiken, um, she's the 24th, 
um, Sister Margaret on the 26th. It's quite a bit of birthdays. In terms of our children, Ayano was the second, uh, Nathaniel is the 12th, Grady is the 18th, Basil is the 27th. And um, so we want to wish them all a very happy birthday. So let's, uh, wherever you are, uh, as a matter of fact, if you want to take a moment and just type in, it'll be hard to type in all of the names, but if you can just say, just type in happy birthday to the birthday people, that would be wonderful. Happy birthday. And Brother John will serenade them. <laughs> with happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. And many more. See, I try to help you out with that many more, I see. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We can't forget those who are celebrating anniversaries. Karen and Robert, I believe you have an anniversary on the 11th, and this would be 29 years of marriage. And uh, Sister Sheila and Mario uh, on the 14th, <laughs> Valentine's Day, it seems, um, will be celebrating 22 years of marriage. So we, we thank God for his faithfulness to you so far, and may the Lord continue to bless you and your marriage. So congratulations um, to those that are celebrating um, wedding anniversaries. We are going to um, receive the tithes and offerings, and we want you to, uh, our, one of our council members um, will now speak to you about the tithes and offerings. You know, one of my favorite attributes of God is that he's a provider. Um, it's just in his nature to do so. Um, all of the Bible, right from the beginning, is full of, of God providing. Um, in the beginning, there was darkness until God provided light. Um, Adam was alone and God saw that it wasn't good, and so God provided a helper. Um, the Bible talks about him uh, clothing the lilies and the grass and taking care of the sparrow. Uh, the Bible says every good and every perfect gift comes from him. It's just full and full and full of proof, the Bible is. Um, about God's nature as a provider. Um, and so when God says in, in Malachi 3.10, when he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this if I would not open for you windows of heaven. Um, I, I know that we all know the scripture. Um, what I'm hoping that you would see is um, the scripture is also um, about God wanting to enter into an agreement with us as his children. Um, this is God saying, I, I want to teach you personally about my nature. And so he's saying kind of directly to you, he's saying, uh, dear son or, or daughter, I want you to willingly trust me and obey me in this and see if I will not pour out for you. Um, I want this relationship with you um, because it, the truth is, as surely as God is God, He will always provide. Um, and so, even in this, even in God asking you to give something to Him, um, He's providing. And He's not just providing money or finances, but He's providing an opportunity for you to, to get to know Him. And so, He's saying, see if I will not rebuke for your sakes. Um, the devourer, see if all the nations will not call you blessed. He's saying, try me in this. I, I want you to get to know me. I want you. Um, and so my prayer for you today is that you would take that step of faith because um, God has never lied. Um, and again, it's in his nature to provide for you and to provide for everything. Um, but I pray that you would choose uh, to take this step of faith um, and that you would choose to experience God in this way. And so, dear God, I thank you for these ones um, and everyone who would hear this under the sound of my voice. I thank you because um, it is you who works in us both to will and to do for your good pleasure. Um, thank you for taking that pressure off of us um, because we can trust you even in the working in us to do 
um, and even in the working in us to, to please you. Mm -hmm. And so I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would convict um, everyone under the sound of my voice who has maybe had trouble in the past given. Would you help them to see, Father, how much you want them, how much you want to be in relationship with them in this way? Um, would you do that convicting work, Holy Spirit? I pray for all the people who have given, that you would continue to strengthen them, um, that you would continue to help them to be able to be consistent and constant with you in this way. And above all, Father, I thank you for, because of your nature to provide. I know because you have said it, Father, you'll do it because your word will never return to you void. Thank you for Shiloh. Thank you for all of your provision for us as a church, as a people, individually. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you would continue to do in the church and in our lives. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Thank you, Sister Ada, for exhorting us to give and for this prayer of blessing. And so now we are placing on the screen the information that you will require um, to give. Um, the email information that you would need or you may need to purpose before the Lord now that you would make a phone call find out if someone is at the church so you can come and drop off your offerings um, however you have to do that would you please get your offerings to the Lord um, would you please give to him honor him for indeed he's faithful and as we're reminded he does provide for us and so uh, when we give to him we give because we appreciate um, and we give because we are obedient. So would you be obedient? And I love the words that she said in her prayer that may the Holy Spirit convict you. There's nothing better than the Holy Spirit convicting you of the importance of doing the right thing and not men trying to manipulate you. So may the Holy Spirit convict you now as we sing a song, as the people take the time to give their offerings unto the Lord and their tithes. Evermore my heart, my heart will say Above all, I live for your glory And even if my world falls, I will say Above all, I live for your glory Evermore my heart, my heart will sing Above all, I live for your glory And even if my world falls, I will sing Above all, I live for your glory Above all, I live for your glory. Above all, I live for your glory. Amen. Is there a hand clap emoji? Yes? Okay. All right. So today's message will be given uh, by our own Reverend Lorraine, our assisting pastor here. <laughs> and so we here are clapping, but we want you to use your emojis and make her feel your, your, your hand clap emojis. Is that what it is? Whatever you got to do, make her feel welcome. Um, and let's receive what the Lord will say to us through her today. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Technology, the things we can do with it, right? But there's one thing technology has not fixed for me. Here we are, speaking God's word to empty chairs. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's, there's a problem with that. But I'm going to say this. I'm so grateful for all you who are tuning in. We need each other. And I love that chat thing we have going. Hey, if you haven't said hello, maybe now is the time to just write in hello. I miss you. <laughs> I was thinking, when the ne I don't know when we will be allowed. We need to all gather together and give hugs. You know, no masks, just like a hug. Hello, welcome. I've missed you because that's how I feel. 
Well, before I start my message, I just want to pray. Father, you have a message that you have ordained for whoever is listening right now to receive. God, open up their hearts. Let them receive. And Father, I am but a, a jar of clay. Uh, Brother John referred to that, the potter. You are the potter, I'm the clay. My jar of clay has holes in it. It's a bit broken. But with you in it, your light shines out. And that's what I want the people to receive, God. Not from me, but from you, the potter. And so here I am. Work through me and glorify yourself in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? We're a jar of clay that's broken. And so, ah, we don't have to be perfect. I needed that. So our pastor has been preaching a very important series on divine reset with human application. So far, we have heard messages in the series entitled Purpose, Preparation, Prescription, Promise. Today, I would like to continue the series with the title, The Listening Factor. Now, for those of you who need a P in there, you can say, pay attention, but my title is The Listening Factor. (laughs) I think it's fitting uh, to speak on listening on the Sunday when we remember what happened at the transfiguration of Christ. You see, transfiguration is a prelude to change. It depicts how we too can be changed from glory to glory as we draw closer to God. On this earth, we're not going to become enveloped with a a white light. What was your version, Uh, Pastor? It was a sparkling light? (laughs) That's not what we're going to see. That's not our goal. No. On this earth, while we're here, it is to be changed from the inside out. What I mean by that is, it's not, we're not going to, okay, roll up our sleeves. I'm going to do better today. I won't do that, or I will do that. No, the inside out. And what better way to change from the inside out than to have the help of Almighty God? Why should we change, you ask? I'm glad you asked. We each have a divine purpose that we were born with. Every single person in this whole wide world is important. And there's something else that every single person in this wide world has in common. We have all lived in this dark world. In this dark world, things have been done to us, uh, through us, uh, in us, uh, by us. We've been marred. We've been hurt. We have been broken but as we change that brokenness becomes less and less and as we get draw closer to god as we grow that's why change is important and another thing um if we just go around with the wind wherever the wind leads uh, there won't be change we're simply going to be driven and tossed by the wind and we will most certainly not be living on purpose so to change, it takes an effort, but it's important. It's, it's good. Now let's take a look at the scripture depicting what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration. I'm going to read the Matthew version, uh, um, Matthew 17, 1 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed so that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Lord, it's wonderful for us to be here. If you want, I'll make three shelters as memorials. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Listen to him. The disciples were terrified and fell face down on the ground. Then Jesus came over and touched them. 
Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they saw only Jesus. As they went back down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Here are some things that we can note from this verse. If we really want to know God's will, we will have to listen. Because he did say, this is my son with whom I am pleased. Listen to him. God understands our thoughts, emotions, and will. He knows how to reassure us. If we accept the challenge to listen to him, we will hear his comfort. And it's not just any comfort. No, no. A personal comfort. Look at how Jesus, his reaction. Grown men falling face planted on the ground in fear. Now, he could have stood and just kind of sneered at them. What's wrong with you? You're scaredy cat? He could have judged them. Oh, ye of little faith. No, he got down to them. He touched them. And he said, get up. Don't be afraid. That's the kind of Lord I am imploring you to listen to. That's the grace that he gives to us. And you see, something else we can learn here is you don't know what's around the corner. If you think your life is all mapped out, yep, A, B, C, D. Well, okay, I would consider that very boring, but then you're forgetting the supernatural part. What can God interject in your life? You know, right now with the lockdown, we don't know when it's really going to be over. And we don't know when we'll be able to take those masks off. But really and truly, God is with us. He will instruct us whether or not we have a mask on our face. So this, this transfiguration of Christ brings hope to all of us. We don't know what's around the corner. Now, my message, <laughs> the listening factor. Well, I want to give you three points um, about the importance of listening. The first point is for confirmation and validation. Well, let's look at another scripture. 2 Peter 1.19. And so... We have been given the prophetic word, the written message of prophets, made more reliable and fully validated by the confirming voice of God on the Mount of Transfiguration. And you will continue to do well if you stay focused on it. For this prophetic message is like a piercing light shining in a gloomy place until the dawning of a new day when the morning star rises in your hearts. You see, Jesus I mean, God actually said about Jesus, this is my son in whom I am pleased. God validated Jesus' ministry, and he can validate yours too today. And if you look at, in that verse, it says, you will continue to do well if you stay focused on it. Uh, on, on what? Well, move up a little bit. On the message, the written message of the prophets. That's the Bible. And you know what? The Bible isn't a supernatural thing. You can take it. You can open it. You can flip through pages. It's real. And you have access to it any time. And you see, another important point about the confirmation and validation is you're a child of God or you can be a child of God. Let's look at John 1, 12. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Now, these verses, they don't say all of God's created children or created humans are a child of God. No, it says all who believed him and accepted him. Well, believed what? Well, Jesus died on the cross as a sinless sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice. No other sacrifices is, is needed to pay for the sins. He rose again so that even the penalty of the sin, the death, doesn't, didn't hold him. So we can have access to God because Christ did the work he did on the cross. He rose again. We have the power over that sin. 
We have access to God. And so we have access to, to listen, listening to him. The confirmation and validation that we can get from him is real. We are his children. Now my second point is for enlightenment, encouragement, and strength. Well, let's take the first one, the enlightenment, enlightenment part. Uh, John 8, 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Here's what I have to say about this verse. Jesus is the light. So you can get enlightenment from him. And let's look at, at Psalm 2410. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the king of glory. Well, if he's the king of glory, then can't we say that he knows all things? And if he knows all things, can't he show us some things? Even personal things like he did by touching the men that fell face down to the ground? As our king... He will work for our success. He's on our side. He wants us to succeed. And when you think about the fact that he's the Lord of heaven's armies, army, there is no one stronger. He is all powerful. We're in good hands. Will you listen? Will you make a habit of listening? That quiet time that you take to just go sit somewhere? And say, God, here I am. It's hard today because we can grab our phone and, and call someone, text someone, play a game, uh, do banking transactions. There's nothing <laughs> much that we can't do you know, with our phones. But leaving that aside and just the quiet time, listen to him. So the importance of listen, listening, the first point was for confirmation, validation, for enlightenment, encouragement, and strength. And my last one, for guidance. For guidance, he can guide us. He can show us specifically in a, a given situation what it is we are to do. He's that personal. Now, one of the ways to get that guidance is through the Word of God, obviously. We're going to look at 2 Timothy 3.16. For every scripture has been written by the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. It will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. The Word of God instructs and corrects. But you see, we don't only have the Word of God. We also have the Holy Spirit, who we all have access to at any given moment of the day. He's not reserved for just one person at a time. That's the beauty of it. So if we look at John uh, 16, 13, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Okay, here's what I'm getting. So you have to make a decision, and it'll impact your future. And you see an obscurity because you don't see the future. You have access to someone who does see the future. And all you have to do is, is ask. Because you know in James it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally and without reproach. That means whether you deserve it or not, you will get his wisdom. So I can make a decision about my future enlightened by the Holy Spirit, his guidance, his comfort, his teaching. Won't my decisions be way better than if I did them on my own? Food for thought. Listen to him. Now this Holy Spirit that I mentioned, well, let's look at what it says about him in Zechariah 4, 6. Your help will not come from your own strength and power. No, your help will come from my spirit. This is what the Lord all-powerful says. So he is the Holy Spirit of the all-powerful Lord. There is, there's 
Nothing that can get in his way. You are in safe hands. God is a merciful and he's a graceful God. You come to him in your brokenness. He will help change you, mold you, heal you. Help you achieve your purpose because that is why he made you. Listen to him. Let's recap our three points. So, the importance of listening. One, for confirmation and validation. For enlightenment, encouragement, and strength. And for guidance. I, I like the, the first song they did. Um, uh, One day every time confess your God. Oh, come just as you are. <laughs> That's the part. Just as you are before your God. You don't have to get it perfect. Just come. Just, just go to God just as you are. And listen. So come, follow Jesus. Listen to him. Not alone. Let's do it together. Let's encourage each other. And as we, it says on the screen, let's, let us walk, laugh, cry, and dance together. Let us listen to him. I'd like to sing this song. And it's, it's really, it's a prayer. Um, if you don't know it, don't worry about it. Just, just close your eyes. Listen to the words. And if you agree with the words, just say amen. And we'll do it a couple times. You can join me with the song. To, to know him, to know him is the cry of my heart. Spirit, reveal him to me. To hear what he's saying brings new life to my bones. To know him, to know him alone. To know him, to know him is the cry of my heart. Spirit, reveal him to me. To hear what he's saying brings new life to my bones. To know him, to know important and powerful word on the importance of listening God is still speaking and how many of us in this world that we are in these times that we are facing we need validation we need confirmation we we need encouragement and enlightenment we need guidance and we are reminded today that it can happen we can get it and so I trust that you would make spending time with the Lord getting in his word listening to the Holy Spirit Make that a priority so that you will hear from God, even as we are in this divine reset. Wonderful, wonderful reminder that it is very important to listen, to listen, to pay attention to what the Lord is saying. Thank you, Reverend Lorraine, for the word. As a matter of fact, um, after the prayer of communion, she will sing that song again. Um, uh, I think the message is she's rightfully said it's a prayer. And as we are on this Transfiguration Sunday, may we know Him. May we know Him. And when we know Him, maybe we can be like Him. And so, beloved, as we prepare to partake of the Holy Communion, I trust that you have prepared for this. It is the first Sunday of the month. And uh, we encourage you, you need just a cracker, some crackers, some wafer uh, and uh, water, if, uh, juice rather. If you don't have juice, water is fine. If you don't have crackers, bread is fine. 
uh, just something that you have. If you have unleavened bread, that's great. If you have matzahs, that's even better. Um, but whatever you have, uh, you want to be biblical, unleavened bread is fine. And and the Welch's grape juice is, is good. But any juice, uh, and when we come to the prayer of consecration, you would hang on to it. You would bless it, even extend your hand over it, whatever is comfortable for you. And we would partake in our, in our, in our doctrine, in our denominational tradition. Uh, we do not believe that the elements become the body and blood of Jesus Christ, but we believe that when we partake of the Holy Communion and the prayer of consecration is prayed, that somehow in a particular way, Jesus becomes present. And so that's why Holy Communion is wonderful, uh, is a wonderful um, sacrament for us. And so as we prepare, we don't take this lightly, um, the Lord's table, whether we are together or virtual. Um, as a matter of fact, it's so wonderful that we are experiencing the presence of Jesus in our homes all over the city, even all over the world. And so right where you are, would you now join us in the prayer of confession? Why? Because the Lord's table, the Lord's supper is for believers, only those who've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's who it's for, people who are repentant, people who have made Jesus Christ the Lord of their lives. And so right where you are, if you would join us as we pray together, the prayer of confession and approach. Almighty God, I, I confess, confess my, my sins, sins to you, and I receive your forgiveness, made possible by Jesus Christ, who we confess as Savior and Lord. Sanctify and baptize me with the Holy Spirit as I commit to walk in repentance, serving you, loving you, and honoring you. As I now partake of the Holy Communion, I do so trusting in your abundant grace and mercy, in remembrance with appreciation and thanksgiving, that by faith my body is healed, my soul is made whole, my spirit is revived, my heart is recreated, and my mind is renewed. In Jesus' name, amen. All-powerful God, today we remember that on a mountain, Christ's human body was transfigured by your divine splendor. To those present on Christ's face was glimpses of your glory. When we today read the accounts of Christ's life, we see your love. In Christ, your image is untarnished and the burden of human sorrow and suffering cannot diminish his reflection of your holiness. The world was dark when Christ died, but the light of his face could not be extinguished. From the grave, Christ rose like the sun with blinding power and radiant peace. In obedience to the will of his Father, on the night before Christ died, he took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper, Christ took the cup again. Again, he gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink ye all of this, for this cup represents the new covenant sealed in my blood, my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Father, in remembrance of your gracious acts of our redemption through Jesus Christ, we take from your creation these elements that are here and, and wherever people are holding them all over the city or even across this country, even around the world, wherever this service is being watched. These elements we present before you, asking you to bless them and grant that as we eat and as we drink, we will do so with appreciation for our redemption, but also in faith, believing for healing, peace, protection, provision, victory, and all the blessings that Christ has made possible for us over 2,000 years ago. Father, the Holy Communion speaks of our redemption, but it also says that we who believe have come into union. We are in union with you through Christ, but we're also in union with other believers. So now we pray for our presiding, our presiding Bishop Robert and Sister Votary. Give them strength, direction, and wisdom, and good health. We pray for all the holiness churches, including the affiliate churches directly connected to Shiloh. We pray for all other churches that we know of that seek to share the gospel of the kingdom in this our broken world. Father, we pray for and we remember believers around the world 
especially those who live in the troubled areas of the world, whether they are afflicted by wars or disasters, natural disasters, calamities of all kinds. Oh God, be gracious, merciful, and send them your help. We pray for persecuted Christians around the world. My God, would you give them grace? Would you give them victory? Would you give them love? Would you make them steadfast in their commitment to you? Would you make every provision for them, especially those that are marginalized in these times of pandemic? We, be, we pray and we remember our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world and we remember those who work with them and work concerning them. Father, we are commanded in scriptures to pray for those in authority over us. So we remember those in civic authority over us, Elizabeth, our sovereign. We pray for the right honorable Richard Wagner, our acting governor general. Father, we also pray that you would give wisdom as a replacement is chosen. Father, we pray for Justin, our Prime Minister, Doug, the Premier, the Senators, the Members of Parliament, the Members of Provincial Parliament as well. We pray for the mayors of the various cities where we live, as well as all the city councillors and all who influence our civic living. Yes, may they know Christ, but also that they may operate in justice, truth, and godliness. Father, even now in the sacred moment, we pray for our church, Shiloh. We pray that you would bless her, that you would lead her, that you would guide her, that you would increase her, that you'd make every provision for our Shiloh, God, that you would cause her light to shine brightly, that lives will be changed and transformed through the ministry of Shiloh Holiness Church. From the leadership to the pews, to the members, bless this church. May this church always stand on the side of godliness and righteousness, and may this church be effective. Father, for every person connected to this church, every person now, wherever we are, we lift our petitions, our concerns, and our cares to you. We pray especially for the families connected to Shiloh Holiness Church that you would bring change, transformation, turnaround and breakthroughs in our families. Father, we thank you for Christ's perfect and complete work at Calvary. We give you all praise, all glory and all honor for you are most worthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, the body of Christ broken for us and the blood of Christ shed for us. These, beloved, are gifts of God, from God, for the people of God. Those who have repented. Those who are walking in the way of righteousness. Those who have made Jesus indeed the Lord and Savior of their lives are invited and welcome to partake. Friends, the body of Christ given for us, let us eat. Beloved, the blood of Christ shed for us, let us drink. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for enduring the cross. Thank you for enduring the beatings. Thank you that you enjoyed it so you can say it is finished. It is finished. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that peace and victory is ours, that we don't have to live under shame or guilt, that we don't have to live with resentment and bitterness. Thank you, Lord, that we can live with hope. I hope that is real, not only for this life, but even when we slip from this life into eternity. Thank you, dear Jesus. Right where you are, if you would agree with me in prayer. And if you would say after me, thank you, Father. For the gift of your son. 
For the gift of your son. By the stripes that fell on his back. By the stripes that fell on his back. My body is healed. My body is healed. Come on, go ahead, claim your healing. My body is healed. My body is healed. From the crown of my head. From the crown of my head. To the sole of my feet. To the sole of my feet. Every cell. Every cell. Every organ. Every organ. Every function of my body. Every function of my body. Is healed. Is healed. Restored. Restored. Renewed. Renewed. Come on, claim healing now. Whether it's allergies, migraine, headaches, back aches, claim healing muscle pains claim divine healing now in Jesus' name by his stripes we are healed now let's continue Lord Jesus Lord Jesus thank you for your precious blood thank, thank you for, for your precious blood your sin free your sin free disease free disease free blood blood your shed blood your shed blood has removed every sin has removed every sin from my life from my life through your blood through your blood I'm forgiven I'm forgiven and I am made and I am made completely righteous completely righteous because of your shed blood dear Jesus because of your shed blood dear Jesus I receive protection I receive Protection. Come on. I receive protection. I receive protection, protection from COVID. Protection, protection from all COVID. of the variants. All of the variants. I receive protection. I receive protection. I receive healing. I receive healing. Wholeness. Wholeness. And provision. And provision. Healing in my family. Healing, healing in my family. Healing in my mind. Healing in my mind. Wholeness in my emotions. Wholeness in my emotions. Provision financially. Provision financially. Provision. Divine provision. Divine provision. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, would you give the Lord praise Amen. right where you are? Go ahead and praise Him. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We receive all of your blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just going to sing that verse, that, that, court, that song Reverend Lorraine did, just one more time, to know Him. To know Him. Hallelujah. To know Him is the cry Reveal him to me To hear what he's saying Brings new life to my bones To know him To know him To hear what he's saying Forever I'll 
Moshe. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross. Someday for a crown. Amen. What a wonderful service we had today. And we thank you for choosing to be a part of the service. We thank our um, psalmist exhortationist for the day, Brother John. <laughs> you're, you're the psalmist, she's the preacher. <laughs> you're about to clap for yourself. <laughs> um, he did a great job and uh, may the Lord continue to bless and prosper and increase the impact of his ministry. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for choosing to, to be with us. I trust that you were blessed. And we want to challenge you in this on this Transfiguration Sunday. Allow the transforming power of Jesus to happen in your life. It is the greatest thing that you can let happen. Seek intimacy with him and, and make it a priority listening to him. Gracious God, thank you for Christ and his perfect and complete work for each one of us. We ask you now to illuminate us with the radiance of Christ's love so that we will shine in faith and witness as your disciples. Transform us into the likeness of Christ so that we may live for him as he, so that we may live for you, O God, as Christ lived loving serving and obeying you like christ himself did in Jesus' name we have prayed amen well would you bow your heads and receive uh the blessing and remember to um type in there good job reverend lorraine i was blessed um so she can be uh ministered to so she can be encouraged as a result of her uh, ministration and continue to look out for each other continue to care for each other continue to support each other um, continue to most of all to pray for each other and let us be the most loving set of people that we can be god bless you now would you receive the blessing beloved the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and that peace from god that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and your minds and the knowledge and the love of god and of his son jesus christ who is our lord and every blessing of god almighty who is father son and holy spirit be upon you and with you now and forever if you receive it in Jesus' name say amen Amen. Well, our closing song is when the roll is called up yonder. And that's where we're going. That's the hope that we have. This is not our final resting place. As I remind you every week, we put the candles out in this place. I trust that you have been illuminated, enlightened, reignited, so that you can shine even brighter for Jesus this week. And we close the Bible. Go ahead and let God use your mouth, even your life. But however he chooses, go ahead and speak for Jesus. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. And, and I'm, I keep telling you, it's not just words. I love you. I miss you. I, I can't wait uh, for the day when we can be together again. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Take good care. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair the saints of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder i'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection shall. 
When his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the skies And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there Oh, when the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called when the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder I'll be there Amen